So we are working on solving linear equations. Our last couple of videos dealt with these rational equations, the ones with fractions in them. We saw in part four that it gets extremely complicated when we have very large fractions. And I told you that there's a much easier way. Well, now I'm going to show you that easier way. And it is the magic trick method. Now you've heard me talk about the magic trick and you've seen me use the magic trick before when we're dealing with complex fractions. It's going to be the same idea when I'm trying to solve linear equations that contain fractions. So let us review the steps of the magic trick method in equation format. So the steps are ultimately the same. The first thing that we need to do is we need to find the overall LCD between all fractions involved, and sometimes that means we need to factor the denominators before we actually get to those fractions formats. Once we get our LCD, the process is to multiply all of those fractions by the LCD, and that means all of the denominators, meaning all of the fractions in this problem disappear. And since it's a disappearing act, that's why I call it my magic trick method. At this point, you should have no more fractions involved, and that means you're just down to a basic, a simpler linear equation, and you can solve that using the steps that we've used up until this point. And always, last but not least, you should check the solution to make sure you have the right answer in the first place. So we're going to do this magic trick method on the last two examples that we've seen just in the previous videos. So example three here, which is an easier of these rational equations, and that beast of a problem, example four. So let me show you how to use the magic trick in example three, and then maybe you'll be able to apply it to example four on your own. Okay. The first thing that I need to do is I need to find my least common denominator between all of my fractions, and that might mean I have to factor these denominators first. This one's pretty easy. I can factor my denominator of 6 to give me 2 times 3. So I see that my LCD is, in fact, 2 times 3 or 6, because all of those pieces have those two factors in it. So what I'm going to do now in step number two is I multiply all my terms or I multiply all of my fractions by the LCD. Now this is the most complicated step, but once you get past this step, it should be smooth sailing from here. So let me just write this step out. I have my first fraction of two thirds X and I'm multiplying it by my LCD of six. And you might want to think about it as 6 over 1, because you're multiplying this in the numerator. Minus 1 half times my LCD of 6 is equal to 5, 6 times 6. So now when I multiply all of my fractions by this, my denominator should cancel. So there actually should be no multiplication involved. It should be all canceling involved. So first, I have 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. Next, I have 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. And last, 6 divided by 6 completely cancel and leave me with 1. So when I do this multiplication, I have 2x times 2, which leaves me with 4x. And of course, that's all over 1, but I don't write it. Minus a 1 times 3, or minus 3, is equal to a 5 times 1, or is equal to 5. So I have changed this from a fraction problem just to a linear equation. And now I can solve it by isolating my variable. So my first step is to add 3 from both sides, leaving me with 4x is equal to 8. Divide by 4 gives me my final answer of x is equal to 2. So this is what the problem looks like when you use the magic trick method. Let's go back and review what the problem looked like when we use just the basic method. 
that look like this step here. Now these steps might seem pretty equivalent because the right hand side was just our check step, but notice this one had more fractions involved and our magic trick method literally almost had no fractions involved. So most people prefer to not use fractions, so that's why this magic trick method is typically a better method for all students. Okay, let us move to example four. Now last time we had to divide this into individual fractions. If you're using your magic trick method, you should not have to do that because all of these denominators should disappear. So here is example four. The magic trick process is going to be the exact same process that we saw in the last example. So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can solve this problem by using the magic trick method. Now you should know what the answer is because we already solved this problem by using the alternate method in the previous video. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out what our LCD between 4, 8, and 12 is. And you might do that by picking out your common factors. So let me start with the largest one. 12 I can write as a 4 times 3. 8 I can write as a 4 times 2. And of course, 4 I can just write as itself as 4. So my LCD needs to have all of these pieces in it. It needs to have the four that all of them have in common, but it also needs to have these other missing pieces. It needs to have the two and it needs to have the three. So my LCD here is four times two times three, or overall my LCD is 24. Now this might have been able to pick out without factoring the denominators, but again, I'm showing you this process here to help us with more complicated examples in the next set of videos. So what I need to do now is I need to multiply by my LCD and hope that all of these denominators cancel out. Now my properties of equality say that I multiply both sides of my equation by my LCD. So I multiply my left hand side by 24 and I multiply my right hand side by 24. Now the right hand side's easy to see so let me just write that out. 1 minus 4x entirely over 12 times 24. My left hand side I can write it out the way I see it. Or, since I know that there is an addition involved, that means I need to distribute this 24 to both fractions. And that's actually what we did in this example here. I distributed my 6 to both fractions. I just didn't write out that step. So, writing it out here, I have 2x minus 1 all over 4 times 24 plus 3x plus 4 all over 8 times 24. So I'm about halfway through step number 2 of this problem by multiplying all these fractions by my LCD. Now remember, I don't actually do any multiplication in this step. I do canceling to get rid of those denominators. So, in my first fraction, 24 divided by 4 leaves me with 6. In my second fraction, 24 divided by 8 leaves me with 3. And on my right-hand side, 24 divided by 12 leaves me with 2. So, let me just write out what I have left. I have 2x minus 1 times 6 plus 3x plus 4 times 3 is equal to 1 minus 4x times 2. Now I can see that this is still a pretty large problem at this point, but I have no more fractions involved. So that takes the level of complication of this problem down quite a bit. So now I follow my steps to solving linear equations. Simplify each side individually, 
isolate my variable by doing opposite operations, and then I should have my solution. So my first step of solving this linear equation is simplifying both sides individually. So I do that by distributing all of these outside numbers here. And I also want to point out something because this is a common mistake that most students do. If one of these operations were subtraction, like if this guy was a subtraction here, you would also need to distribute that subtraction through the parentheses as well because that subtraction goes to that whole term along with it. So don't forget to distribute any negatives along with any coefficients that we see. Okay, so using this distribution, that gives me a 12x minus 6 plus a 9x plus 12 is equal to 2 minus 8x. Now combining like terms, 12x plus 9 gives me a 21x. 12 minus 6 leaves me with a 6, and copying down my right-hand side of 2 minus 8x. Now I've simplified all of these individually, so now I'm going to start rearranging them by doing opposite operations. Let me move my x's to the left by adding 8x from both sides, and my constants to the right by subtracting 6 from both sides. On the left, that leaves me with 29x, and on the right, 2 minus 6 leaves me with a negative 4. My final thing to isolate my x variable is to divide by 29, and that leaves me with the answer that I knew I was looking for, of negative 4 over 29. Again, you can see that this is a large problem, so that there is a large amount of steps involved, but once you get rid of those fractions, it's not that big a deal. It is a much easier process to do this problem this way rather than trying to do it with all of those fractions like we did in the previous method. So here summarizes the video of using my magic trick, but in these two examples, Notice my denominators were only numbers. My next video is going to be over how do we use this magic trick when there are also variables or letters in our denominator.